Even as a small infant, little Kipu had been able to smile with her whole being. And when she laughed, it was with an uncontained joy that touched all within her spear. Sonam looked at the smiling infant's face, and he immediately saw a little Buddha. In that moment, and with the merest twinkling of a child's eyes, his many attachments began to break. And after years of effort, Sonam finally tamed his moving mind, albeit briefly. In his imagination, a beautiful rainbow appeared in the sky, shining vibrantly over a land of sparkling water and great green rolling hills. And his inner Lama spoke to him, as he had always done since the day he was born. This little Buddha has given you the gift of unconditional love, Sona. Her love is free from the poisons and concepts of conditioned mind. And maybe now the wounds of your heart can heal. One day, when they were in the old park feeding the swans, Kipu asked Sonam about love. Love can be many things, Kipu. It can be the spring and summer of our life, or it can be the cruel obsession that drives us to despair. And then there is being in love. That can be very pleasant for a while. Of all of these, only unconditional love lasts, for it is free from the attachments of our hearts. What colour is your nail polish? I don't know. Tell me, Kipu, what do you know about witches? Witches can fly where they want to go every day. Uh huh. What do they look like? They look like scary witches with a scary hat and some scary clothes. Uh huh. And what colour are their teeth? Uh, white. White. And their eyes? What colour are their eyes? Uh, they are black. Black eyes. And, and they can shine in the night and then they can look for something where they can look. Uh -huh. And if I told you I'm writing a story about the Witch of the Green Hedge, what do you think the story should be about? Uh, she would... The things would scare and she would jump up. Uh huh. Do you think witches are good people or bad people? Bad people. One day, when Kipu had just turned three, Sonam decided he would give little Kipu a great treasure on her ninth birthday. There would be nine birthday treasures, Sonam decided. And the first one would be a story that one day the little Buddha would read. When she did, maybe she would remember playing with her bath buddies and be able to see that a tree is not really a tree and that all matter is fundamentally nothing more than light and space dust. Everything in the universe is connected and no part of it, even the most fleeting thought, can exist independently of the whole. Of course it would be many years before Kipu would read the story and by then her conditioned mind would be fully formed. But Sonam hoped his story would be like a hidden terma and help her to remember the little Buddha she once was and would always be. Think about your name once in a while, little Kipula. Who is that person? Think about them in every detail, what they believe in, what they stand for and hold dear. What are their innermost dreams and what do they fear most? Then think, am I that person? Am I real? Who was I before I knew my name? Am I nothing more than an idle thought? Where does that thought come from? And where does it go? If you are mindful of these questions once in a while, you'll be amazed how your answers change over the years. The years seem to fly by when you pass over the watershed of fifty, and in no time little Kipu was seven. 
Sonam still hadn't found his story about the Witch of the Green Hedge and her lost love. And Kipu was now of an age when she would begin to lose her childhood wonder in her life. And too soon she would stop believing in fairies and witches. She would stop believing in Christmas. Tell me, Kipu Nima, what do you know about witches? Witches sometimes turn you into frog, toad, or spiders, and they also have a big cauldron. That doesn't sound very good. I have to be very careful when going to visit this witch of the green hedge then. Yes. Do you still believe in magic, Kipu? Now concentrate on that opening, and let your thoughts pass through it and into the blue beyond. You see, in our minds, Kipu, there is no difference between the real and the imagined world. They both begin in the same place, and the same thing perceives them both. Through our consciousness, we are connected to everything and everyone that is. Silence sat between them, and slowly all their thoughts dissolved into the dance of blue light. Where are we, Sonam? Kipu asked. We are in the old world of the fairies, Kipu. We came through a Sheehan portal. Good evening, little Kipu Nima. Aren't you afraid to be out in these dark woods looking for a wicked witch and plotting to steal from her? Fear not, I mean you no harm, and I will not stop you drinking the waters from my sacred wishing well. But know this child, the waters are cursed. The Hexa de Green and Hecker. And if you choose to stop drinking entirely, then you slowly turn into an old hag with a body covered in warts and ears and eyes as sharp as a wolf. You become a despised creature of the shadows, cursed by circumstance, hated and feared by all whom cross you. Is that why you're alone, Ellie? My last and dearest love betrayed me and abandoned me here in this cursed fairyland 300 years ago. For all of those weary, lonely years, I have waited for him to return to my side, or for two true loves to drink from my wishing well and release me. And I've tarried here with you long enough. Seek my sacred wishing well at your peril, child. The Hexa de Green and Hecker. Kepunima! Kepunima! Wake up! Wake up! It's time to go home for your tea! I was dreaming about the Witch of the Green Head, Sonam. Are you quite sure it was a dream, Kepu? Buddha looked at him with her deep blue eyes and smiled with all the love and compassion of Chama, the mother of loving wisdom, or so it seemed to Sona. Then Kipu glanced towards the wishing well, and just for the briefest of moments she almost looked sad. When Sona thought she might well burst into tears, she laughed with all the joy in her little heart and said, I want ice cream. Ice cream is just so yummy! They ate their ice creams by the wooden pig under the old rowan tree, and soon it was time to say goodbye to the old park and go and find Mummy.
It will be thirty years before Sonam saw Kipu again, if he remained in this time, and if he decided to drink from the wishing well again, then three hundred and thirty-three years would have to pass. Would she still be a broken angel? As Sonam looked across the river to the last of the shipyards, a sense of loss and regret filled him, and he thought of Kipu and Elid, the witch of the green hedge. Would his fairy story make a difference this time? Would she learn to fly? Then Sonam turned away from the great river, and he walked alone towards the northern sky and an uncertain future. But he had no complaints. This was the path he had chosen. Still smile.